What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're looking at how to simplify square roots using factors of perfect squares. So stick around, here we go. Okay, so what we need to remember is that we are going to be finding factors that are perfect squares. So what does that mean? Well, let's have a look at this first example. We have the square root of 20. Now 20 is not a perfect square, meaning that it doesn't have two identical numbers that when multiplied together equal 20. So 20 is not a square number effectively. So we're trying to find a square number so that we can simplify this form. So the first thing we're gonna do is find some factors of 20. So let's start by drawing our factor tree. So 20 could be made up of one and 20, or two and 10, or four and five. So these are all our factors. And what I'm looking for is a perfect square. Well, I can see one here. Four is a perfect square because two times two equals four. Two is identical to two. So we're gonna use this factor pair here and say that the square root of 20 is equivalent to the square root of four times five. You can see I'm not using the traditional multiplication symbol, I'm using this dot, which is a more sophisticated way of showing multiplication. And thanks to the multiplication and product properties law, I can now separate this expression and say that the square root of 20 is equivalent to the square root of four multiplied by the square root of five. So all three of these expressions are equivalent. But because we now have a square root of four, which is a perfect square, we can now say that the square root of four is two, but we can't simplify this expression of the square root of five. So our final answer would be two multiplied by the square root of five. And I don't need to put this multiplication symbol because there's nothing between two and the square root of five, but the assumption is multiplication anyway. Therefore, this is our final answer. Two multiplied by the square root of five is equivalent to saying the square root of 20, but it's a simplified form. Let's have a look at question two. Question two can be done in two ways. Let's have a look at the first one. So one set of factors that equal 32, which include a perfect square, could be 16 and two. So the square root of 16 times two is equivalent to the square root of 32. But again, I can split this up and say the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of two. And we know what the square root of 16 is because four times four equals 16. Therefore, four multiplied by the square root of two is our simplified square root. But there's another way of getting there because 16 and two are not the only factor pairs that include a perfect square. I could also have the square root of four multiplied by the square root of eight because four times eight also equals 32. And now the square root of four is two. So I'd have two multiplied by the square root of eight, but I'm not finished because eight can actually be simplified even further because there is a factor pair of eight, which includes a perfect square. So we must look out for simplifying even further. So I could say that it's two multiplied by the square root of four multiplied by the square root of two because four times two equals eight. And now we know the square root of four is two. So I would have two multiplied by two multiplied by the square root of two. And now I can solve this first part by doing two times two, which equals four. My square root of two can't be simplified anymore. So I'd have four multiplied by the square root of two. And what you'll notice is I get the same answer, but just a different way of getting there. One was a little bit longer than the other. Let's have a look at question three, the square root of 45. So again, I'm looking for those factors, which one of which wants to be a perfect square. And without drawing my factor tree, I can see that we have nine times five. So therefore the square root of nine times five is the same as saying the square root of 45. Let's separate it to be the square root of nine multiplied by the square root of five. And what is the square root of nine? Well, it's three, so therefore it'd be three multiplied by the square root of five, but don't forget we don't need that multiplication sign. So our final answer is three multiplied by the square root of five. Question four and our last one, the square root of 75 can be broken down into saying the square root of 25 times three, because 25 is a perfect square, because we can have five times five equals 25. So let's break down the square root even further and say the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of three. 
but we know the answer to the square root of 25 equals 5 multiplied by the square root of 3. Don't forget we don't need that multiplication symbol. So therefore my final answer is 5 multiplied by the square root of 3. So all of these answers are equivalent to their original question. They are just in the simplified form. Notice one thing. We always start with putting the single number before the square root. That's just common practice. So if you get to a position where you've got the square root first because you did the factors the other way around, your final answer, just flip it around. Remember that multiplication questions are commutative and it doesn't matter which way around they are. So we just want to finish with the individual number being before the square root. And there you have it. That is simplifying square roots. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing to the channel. But for now, I'm going to say peace out and thank you very much. Peace.